Welcome to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti alongside Ethan Euchre. A new book from a renowned physician explains why the traditional psychiatric model is flawed and also promotes the use of off-label medications, which, you know, the FDA doesn't really like. Joining us to discuss is Paul D. Corona, MD, better known as the doctor for depression and author of The Corona Protocol. Thank you for being here, Dr. Corona. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Certainly. So to start, why is it that you believe traditional psychiatric model is flawed? Well, the, the, the typical way psychiatrists do things is just this really hasn't changed over the last decades, really. Um, I mean, a, a very simple example is you know, everyone says, oh, SSRIs should be the first line product like Zoloft and Lexapro. And they're OK, but they, I, I disagree. I think there's, there's better ways of doing things over the last 30 years of practice. Uh, the Corona Protocol really is is the way I've learned how to prescribe and do things in different ways that is not based on the traditional model. Um, so that's what that's what the difference is, is because of the fact that I never really believed in that. And with my own research and treating patients over the years, I've learned better ways of doing things. Well, since the mid '90s, you've been known as Kimberly mentioned as the doctor for depression and. <laughs> I jokingly said before we started, I, I could use your help here. Um, a lot of us can probably relate to that uh, sentiment. So um, how did that come about? How did that uh, sort of moniker stick? Well, I think, you know, I, I, it's my, my history is kind of unique. I started as a family doctor in the early 90s. And, and, I, and during the 90s, I just got so fascinated by uh, mood issues. And I started to really see by prescribing in certain ways uh, that, what I was doing was making a difference, not only in mood, but also physically. So I was starting to see this link between the body and the mind. And by using psych, we call psychotropic medications, I was seeing that uh, making a huge difference in patients' lives. And then and then I, I saw that other doctors weren't doing it that way. When I was reading books and, and journals, I just wasn't seeing other doctors doing it the same way. So by the early 2000s is when I decided to break away from family medicine and kind of move, move full time into you know what I, what I call mind body medicine. What makes your method so revolutionary in psychiatry? Because I, I look at the big picture. I take a really good history, but I look at all the neurochemicals, I, you know, including serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, GABA. So I, I look at all the neurochemicals and not just one like many doctors do. And and. So I try to figure out what's imbalanced in a person's system because all medications are really doing is balancing a person's own natural neurochemistry. So if the chemicals are out of out of whack, people are going to have problems with anxiety and depression and bipolar and ADD and all these other uh, problems. And, and all medications are really doing is rebalancing a person's own chemistry. So that's why I call it the holistic solution, because it's it's really working with the body to heal itself. Now, let's talk about this off-label use of medication. Why is it so controversial and why is it, I guess, a rule rather than an exception in your practice? Well, because the FDA, like she said, uh, does not frowns on off-label because they want doctors to play by the rules. You know, in other words, for a simple example is you know, the number one medication for anxiety or antidepressants, well, that's off-label. So that's just a simple example, but basically off-label means that we've learned how to use medications for re really um, better ways than, than they originally they were studied. See, when a medication is studied, that's all they can talk about. They can only talk about the, the indication that they studied it for. So when it comes out and we start using it over the years, Doctors start figuring out, hey, it's good for this, it's good for fibromyalgia, it's good for irritable bowel syndrome, it's good for chronic fatigue. So we start to see like, wow, it's really good for all these different things. Well, that's all off label. It's not illegal. I mean, nothing what I'm doing is, is you know, but it's, it's basically, I call it cutting edge because I really use medications in ways that is, is creative and, and gets people completely well, not just slightly or partially well. And are there any side effects? Of any of I mean, these medications as far as treatment of depression? I mean, Be because, I mean, I'm sure you've seen all the commercials where they have their warnings and contradictions. And some of these depression medications actually <laughs> bring about suicidal thoughts. That, that's a myth. You know, they don't usually. What, what that whole myth was started with is that if you give an antidepressant with someone who's bipolar and it sends them into a mania, 
and then they crash into depression. That's, that can cause suicidal ideation, but that's typically a misdiagnosis. So when you give it for actually depression, it, it actually takes a, can take away suicidal ideation. So that's a big problem, too, because of the fears. And also, you know, when you get the FDA and the government involved, I mean, look at these commercials. It's ridiculous. I prescribed all of those things that you see on commercials. I haven't seen one of the things they mentioned. <laughs> so basically, the government, you know, I, I call it getting medical advice from attorneys. When you when when the government gets involved and they throw all that that on there, they, it just scares people unnecessarily. So yeah, are there side effects we watch for? Of course, there's always side effects, but we monitor that. I tell people what they are. If you don't like it, we can stop it. You know, so I when I work with patients, I tell them all those things that to watch for and to, and uh, and then you know the side effects are typically not a big issue. Are are supplements and different therapies are are they actually useful or would you say they're just a money making scheme? No, well, I mean, they they can be. I don't think they have the power and the punch of the psychotropics that I work with, but they can be helpful somewhat. I mean, then there's also the new psilocybin and there's the you know the the um the new Nuvo kind of medications, and those can help. Therapy can help. Obviously, I I talk to all my patients about exercising and how important that is. Eating right. Um, yeah, so I think it's just a, I I like to use a holistic approach with my patients and not just talk about medications, which is my specialty, but talk to them about their life. So you're obviously Dr. Corona. What is the Corona protocol? The, the complete title of my book coming out on Tuesday is the Corona protocol, a scientifically proven medical solution to stop addiction, bullying, homelessness, school shootings, and suicide, uh, 30 years in the making. So that's my full <laughs> crazy subtitle. Um, because I, I, in this book coming up, I cover like 30 different stories about different people. So the protocol I talk about in, in all of the 30 stories that I share about people, their struggles, their triumphs, there's some happy endings, there's some, there's some sad endings, some of the stories. So most of this book coming up is a fiction novel um, telling sto- stories about people. And you believe early intervention can help um, eradicate things like shootings and suicide? Absolutely. So the problem is that, you know, that things get to that, that level because, you know, things are not caught early enough. So all the, th- the things I just mentioned there, if we can intervene early and some of these troubled kids and teenagers, if we can intervene early with them, then it's not going to lead to such tragedies that we see. And when you talk about psychotropics, um, I mean, obviously the first thing that comes to my mind, as you mentioned, is things like psilocybin, ketamine, um, even MDMA, things like that. What do you, what do you use? Well, psychotropic medications, what I'm referring to is um, antidepressants, mood stabilizers. So the medications, so they're, I'm talking about the different medications I work with. Those are what we call psychotropic medications. Uh, um, you know, the, you can also talk about, yeah, there are other, other alternative therapies that some people have had success with. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a believer that, Hey, if it, you know, if I've done what I can, what I've done with patients and I've gone as far as I can, and I can't, I can't figure out anything else. And they, and they, a lot of them get a lot better, but not fully, I'm 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 all for trying other things and seeing. Hey, let's try this. Let you know. Let's let's maybe refer you to someone who knows more about other things than I do. Um, so I'm I'm I like working with other doctors and providers and alternative physicians. That hey, if you I don't Western doctors don't have all the answers. You know, we 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 need help too. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this segment. But thank you so much for being on the program, Doctor Paul D. Corona, better known as the Doctor for Depression. Thanks, Doctor. Bye-bye. I mean, I appreciate it. Stay tuned. We'll have more after the break. You're watching American Medicine Today. Don't be screwed by lesser spine institutes who bait you with minimally invasive procedures, then switch to screws, rods, disc replacements, and hardware. At Bonatti, no metal hardware fusions are ever used. Bonatti invented the precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect 98.75% patient satisfaction. Over half our patients have suffered from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Jerry is an avid outdoorsman, racing driver, and business owner from North Carolina. Over the years, Jerry suffered repeated injuries to his back. I ride a horse, 
I ride motorcycles, I ride dirt bikes, I ride four wheelers, I drag race. I drive a car that, you know, runs 175 miles an hour in the eighth mile. And it's from zero to 60 in 0.8 seconds. I do everything, you know, I work in my body shop all day. I pull frames on cars, I paint cars, I do, you know, replace panels, I do whatever I gotta do. While performing a mundane task in a shop one day, his entire life changed. I was at my body shop working. I bent down to pick up an air hose and that was it. I was on the floor, I had to crawl actually to the office to be able to get in a chair to call somebody to come and get me to take me to the hospital. And it was my first experience with a, you know, like a disc blowout, they called it, like a bulge disc. And I'm telling you, it's, it's excruciating. At the time I hurt my back, I was, uh, I'm 6'4". I weighed 297 at that time. And, you know, it's like, you gotta have people to help you and you're sort of big guy, you know, and you, your wife weighs 150 pounds and she's trying to pick you up, put you in the car. The pain affected his daily life from his ability to walk to interacting with his family. When every time I would take a step, the pain would shoot up my back and down my leg. And I mean, it was just like somebody's taking a knife and they're just digging it in your back like that. Every time you try to move, that knife just, it goes in and then you move again, it goes in again. I was sideways and I was all distorted because I couldn't put no weight on this leg. I couldn't sit on the toilet, I couldn't do anything. It was just that bad. And you know, to be in that predicament and you're used to doing everything for yourself, then you realize you gotta depend on somebody else to help you and then you start, your whole career starts running through your mind. I just gotta, I gotta get back to work. That's your main thing, you know, you gotta get back to work. And your kids are going to school and you, you got people that depend on you that's working for you and it just makes it that much harder. So you're stressed out, you got back pain, you know, all of these things are just all of a sudden is on you. Jerry tried numerous conservative treatments to keep working while fighting through his pain. Oh man, I've had massage therapy, chiropractor care, I've had acupuncture, I've been put in traction, I've been hung upside down and, you know, to separate your disc, you know. I tried everything before I came. You know, when you're on medication, it just alters everything. Your, your thought process, you know, the way you act toward people, and it just, it causes a lot of a lot of conflict and stress. The situation with me and my wife was was really bad because I couldn't, I couldn't do things with her. I couldn't, uh, we couldn't talk and communicate because and even the kids, I would holler at my kids and I knew I was doing it, but you know, when you're in pain, you're like, you know, you don't care about nobody but yourself because you're taking the medication that they're trying to treat you with. It's not going to help you. All it's going to do is block it for a little while and then it's going to come right back. You, you, fighting and arguing just makes it worse. And that's what happens when you, you know, get on the medication. You, you're, when you're in pain, it causes you to do things you don't want to do. Desperate to find a resolution to his pain, Jerry underwent traditional open back surgery at a spine facility near his home. Uh, I went to the Pinehurst Surgical Clinic in Pinehurst, North Carolina. That's where my first original surgery was, which they called open back surgery. They're opening your back up this this uh, cut this long, six to eight inches. They take a clamp, just like they do when you have open heart surgery. They open your back up, your muscles and everything, and they go in there and they try to repair what's damaged. But once they sew you up and everything's got to heal up, it took me almost two and a half years to get over that surgery. I was on disability 50 some months. I was on um, just total disability. I mean, when I first got out, I couldn't even hardly get up and walk. When another injury to his back occurred, Jerry started researching alternatives to open back surgery and found the Bonatti Spine Institute. I went online and researched a little bit, and that's how I found this. At the hotel the night before his consultation, he had a chance encounter that convinced him he'd come to the right place. When I first got here, when I was at the um, hotel, Homewood Suites, I checked in, I went to eat supper that night, in the hotel because I didn't want to go anywhere. I was feeling so bad. And this guy sat down beside me. And I said, uh, you know, I asked him, he had on the hoses I got on right now, the stockings. He said, when I came here, I had rods in my back. I was in a wheelchair for two years. And he said, I haven't walked in two years. And he was out walking. And I was like, tell me some more about this surgery, you know? And he kept telling me, I was like, 
I said, I had to see it for myself. And that right there, that just actually made a believer out of me. The exclusive Bonatti spine procedures are performed incrementally using conscious IV sedation, where the patient remains alert and communicating with the surgeon to ensure their source of pain is eliminated before they leave the operating table. When I was on the table, I was awake watching the surgery on a the screen. They asked me to move around. I got up and moved around, you know, to see if I was feeling it, and it was gone. Yeah, it works. When Bonatti goes in there and they do a little incision like an inch and a half, two inches long, it's totally different. It's just this, they go around the muscle, they don't go into the muscle or open the muscle, and it just the recovery time is just a whole lot quicker. And I didn't have any pain. It, it's, it's just unbelievable the difference between the two surgeries. Somebody that would go to get their back cut open is just ridiculous. You know, after I left here, I returned to the business, but I was doing, you know, just overseeing everything, make sure everybody had work to do. We had insurance work coming in. After I got back, everything got back to normal. You know, I got on a good diet. I started losing weight. I was feeling good about myself. And, you know, I was getting along better with my family and my wife, especially. Jerry highly recommends anyone suffering with neck or back pain to contact the Bonatti Spine Institute. There's people in North Carolina that I tell about it and they're like, oh, I don't know. That's, you know, that's down in Florida. And I'm like, man, I'm telling you, you need to go. It doesn't cost you nothing but a ride in time. And it's, you know, and it affects your relationship, your kids, your job, your income. It affects everything. I mean, there's nothing, even your, the things you enjoy doing, you can't do. And why sit at home on the couch, in pain, eating pills all day, and you could come here, have your surgery, and actually be good that day? It's an investment if you, you know, even if you have to borrow the money from somebody, it, it, you wouldn't believe it. You have to actually be here to believe it. I actually went online and watched Dr. Bernardi's, some of his videos, and I, I'd seen tons of people. But like I said, when I seen people in person that actually sit there and they tell you what pain they were in, and they cry when they tell you about how they feel, just like me right now, that's, that's real because it, it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I just, I wouldn't trust nobody else. There's, there's just no way. To see more stories of recovery just like this, search for the Bonatti Spine Institute on YouTube, Rumble, Roku, Amazon's Fire TV, Google Play Store, and Apple's App Store. Welcome back to American Medicine Today. I'm alongside Dr. Bonatti, and we're going to talk about something called paresthesia syndrome. Dr. Bonatti, I've never heard about this before. What is it? Paresthesia syndrome is a type of information that the nerves are giving to the body due to some type of an injury. And I'm not talking about physical injury. I'm talking about trauma inside of the nerve or around the nerve. Okay. And that nerve needs to be decompressed or something like that. And unfortunately, if it is not very done with the correct approach and in a specific area, then what happened is that paresthesia after the surgery impact negatively the mm -hmm. surgery. And how you know what is paresthesia? The nerve will give you symptoms of pain mm -hmm. or will give you pain, symptoms of burning or will give you symptoms of itching or will give you another symptoms that they wake you up, that these sensations of something crawling on your skin. Ooh. When you talk about it itching, is this one of these itches you can't really scratch because it's not on the surface? Exactly. Okay. You, you feel the itching, and if you touch it, sometimes you can feel a little discomfort, mm -hmm. and that thing disappear for a couple of seconds, but come back again. Right. The same thing the feeling of heat, you feel like it's burning something. Some other times you feel like somebody is just practically burning so strong mm -hmm. that you will have reactions on the skin and some of the people will have blisters or so. Oh. And if continue progressing will damage the nerve 
and it becomes more extensive and for too long, that nerve will become now weak and the information to the muscle will be poor and then that will create weakness in legs or weakness in hands. Mm -hmm. So paresthesia syndrome is being studied recently in Osaka because they put around maybe 100 patients that they were after surgery having these symptoms. Mm. And they were very curious to see that after a procedure to, to treat the spine problems like mm -hmm. herniated discs or, or sensations that they were associated with weakness and right. things like that, then they decompressed that area or they did laminectomies in those patients. And the results were that these patients wake up with normal, better motor behavior, mm -hmm. but they have a sensory behavior that was totally upsetting them and, and, and reported as a negative result. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought this is a negative result secondary to the surgery, mm -hmm. and it's not. So it's a sensory part of the perineuro that you need to exactly localize and be able to correct. At the Monati Institute, we found that one very frequent, and we are able to correct decompressing the area mm -hmm. exactly where the symptom appears. So when you're talking about blisters, I had um, an occurrence where I had extreme pain that was uh, basically from the thigh around the knee and down towards the ankle into the foot, and suddenly a rash appeared. Was that this? Yes. It's usually that is a paresthesia syndrome. And then what happened is initially you feel like 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 burning, like pain in that area, right. but becomes very intolerable. Mm -hmm. And it's so painful sometimes that will create blisters on the skin or rushes on the skin that they are extremely painful just a touch. Some people cannot put the sheet on top of the leg uh, if the leg was operated for a, for a procedure right. and then in the paresthesia is on the leg, then, then they cannot put the sheet on top because it's extremely mm -hmm. sensitive and produce a lot of pain. Right. So this syndrome is very poorly described and the results of that is usually the people abandon mm -hmm. and then uh, the body react and in few months, the thing is start to become more tolerable. But the people has months of this discomfort and sometimes the, blist, the, the, the rush become blisters and others sometimes you scratch so much that area that you create wounds or infections. What you're saying is as bad as that can be, it's not directly related to spine surgery, but it is something that can be treated at the Bonatti Spine Institute. Yeah, it's not related to back surgery, mm -hmm. but it's related to the injury that happens in that nerve that initially is already giving you that information. And and how frequent does this occur? It's very frequent. It's, it's part of the compound of the pain. Mm -hmm. The people say, oh, I, I hurt in my back, but at the same time, they don't come back and they say, Sometimes I feel like it's burning. Sometimes right. I feel like itches. Some other time I feel like like it's like it's something crawling on my skin, mm -hmm. and that is the that's the nerve telling you that that it's an injury in that nerve that needs to be addressed. Right, but it's not all in the mind, which is what a lot of doctors' offices tend to tell people nowadays. No, that's not that's not in the mind, and it's very clear because then becomes. Uh, visible on some of the patients because you can see the rush. And, and if you don't take care of the rush, then you can see a blister. Right. And if you don't take the blister, you can see a wound. Mm. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Dr. Bonatti talking about paresthesia. I think everybody was shocked. Like, really, you had surgery today? I had a drain tube. I was at my desk doing payroll for 200 employees. Worked till night. Got up, went to bed. 
actually the recovery was great. I mean, I really immediately felt the difference. I was able to go back to work within a couple of days. The progress after each procedure was amazingly good. The recovery, all told, has been phenomenal. We went to the Bonatti Institute, and that was the day, the turning point in my life. This type of surgery is so much more advanced and the recovery time is so much less that it's just a no-brainer. If you've got pain, go to Bonatti. The surgeries that I had, actually, I recovered very easily from, I would say. Um, I actually went to work the following afternoon. Six days after surgery, I was back in the gym, slowly but surely working my way back to, back to fighting, back, back to basically 100% of fighting, you know, so. Six days, and everybody was in awe. Like, didn't you just get out of surgery? I'm like, yeah, I feel great. And like, okay, let's see how you do. And I was rolling with everybody, and I'm in the advanced class. So that sounds a lot right there. First time I came in here was Monday, and today is Thursday. I've had two surgeries, and am doing fantastic. I'm still in shock that I can walk. That's all within four days. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Welcome back to American Medicine Today. We're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Bonatti about paresthesia. And so what do you recommend to people if they are suffering in that way? Well, Should they, they mention to, the specific they ailment? Well, they need, they need to, first time they think we, did, we need to identify if this thing happens before the surgery, that usually is. Then we need to identify why the surgery didn't correct the problem mm -hmm. because probably didn't address exactly the area where the nerve is under some sort of an injury. This type of a problem is more frequent in degenerative changes mm -hmm and in surgeries after massive decompressions. And I start to see some of these problems now more often in individuals that they have fusions and with the screws and plates because the massive scar that you can see after the surgery. Right. So that problem is something that needs to be addressed. Right. I see more and more impact in trying to produce more and more fusions in the country mm -hmm. and in the world. And I think the misinformation that the, the people has right now about fusions needs to be addressed and they needs to be addressed seriously because we're gonna have a population of thousands and thousands of people that they're gonna cause large amount of expenses on the healthcare right. because fusions don't work. If you suffer with paresthesia and would like to know if you're a candidate for the exclusive Bonatti Spine Procedures, visit AskBonatti.com. You can search the Bonatti Spine Institute on all your favorite streaming apps. If you have any comments or questions, contact us at the numbers below. Or you can tweet at Dr. Bonatti using the hashtag AmericanMedicineToday or hashtag AMT. We would like to hear from you.